If you wanna start a Lego city in 2024, where should you even start? What's the best Lego modular building? What if you can only afford one or two modulars to start? Today I'm gonna to be answering all of those questions and more. Before we dive in though, if you could take a second to please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Over half of you that are watching my videos aren't subscribed, so I'd really appreciate it if you joined my community and joined my Lego city journey. First, I'm gonna talk about Lego modular buildings. That's the focal point of any city is all the different buildings in your city. A question I hear all the time is what should be my first Lego modular building? And the easy answer is one that's on Lego's website. They do retire, but they come out with one every year. They currently at the time of recording this video have the Jazz Club, the Boutique Hotel, and the Natural History Museum up on the website. And my recommendation would be to go with the Jazz Club. There's a couple reasons why I say this. I know it's not the oldest of the three, so the Boutique Hotel is going to retire before, but it's the same price is the Jazz Club and I think in terms of a building experience it gives you a lot more to work with as a beginner. My first Lego modular was the bookshop which is no longer available it's retired so you'd have to buy it on like the third party market but that set really helped me learn how to build a Lego modular and how to kind of make a rectangular building and really inspired me to start building my own modulars. Now I'm not saying that you could probably just build your own modulars after building one Lego modular set, but if you're wanting to, then the Jazz Club does give you more of a base in terms of being able to copy techniques. I myself had built a ton of modulars before I even thought about making my own modular buildings. And the cool part is, is that you never have to make your own modular buildings. I just know a lot of people like to make mocks or what's called my own creations. And a lot of people are excited to make those, especially with buildings in Lego cities. I too have a few Lego modular mock builds that are on my channel so I'll link to those above. Here's something I want to stress, especially for those who are just starting their Lego city. You don't need 10 Lego modulars for this to be a city. You don't even need three. As long as you have one or two, that's enough. Your city is always a work in progress. And at the end of the day, we're doing this for fun and for a hobby. I know when I started out, I felt like I had to keep up with all of these people that were making content online and getting a bunch of modular buildings to have a whole city like I have behind behind me now, and the truth is, is that you don't. Your city will evolve over time and it will eventually grow to be as large as mine. Now that we have a modular building or a few, it's time to decide what to put our Lego city on. There are two options. The first option, which I feel like a lot of people, even myself started with, is a shelf. And this can be any shelf. It could be a shelf above your bed, it could be floating shelves, it could be these shelves that I got off of Amazon for like a garage. Again, I wanna stress that this is your city and it can go wherever you want and you can still call it a city. There is no gatekeeping when it comes to Lego city building. A few things to keep in mind when you're looking at potentially getting a shelf or looking at using a shelf you already have is measurements, especially measurements of Lego base plates. Most Lego modulars are a base plate large, and so that's 10 inches by 10 inches. So you do wanna find a shelf that at least comes out from the wall 10 inches and has some room for a couple modulars. Also think about how you wanna build your city. For instance, when I had my Lego shelf city, I had enough room to have a base plate and have almost a half base plate where I built a custom road to go in front of all the modulars and just gave it more of this like finished feel. Something I also recommend looking into if you're really serious about getting into modulars and building a Lego city is the mills system. This is a really cool system where essentially you make base plates for all of your modulars and it raises them a brick and a plate above the base plate. This not only makes the modular way more sturdy when moving it, but it allows you, if you ever build a bigger Lego city like me, to already have everything on mills plates to where you're spending little bits of money over time to make them, compared to if you're trying to mills plate an entire city like this, it can be really daunting and really expensive. I didn't start out with doing that, and when I wanted to switch over to mills, it was an actual pain to take all of my modulars, essentially unbuild the whole first floor, and move them onto the mills plates. So that's something that I would just keep in mind, do some research, and consider. Option two, which will come later as you're gaining more modular buildings, is a table. Again, you should be considering everything you were considering when you were looking at your shelves just in the form of a table. The interesting 
interesting part about using a table though is that it does take up more of whatever room it's in. So like me, you would have to be lucky enough probably to have some sort of Lego room or like Lego area in a basement or something like that. If you wanna see the whole experience I went through getting this table city figured out, I'll go ahead and link the first video where I started thinking about a table city above so that you can follow throughout to see everything that I messed up and everything I did. Um, and that should hopefully help you if you're looking to upgrade your city from a shelf city to a table city. All right, Cam, I've got a couple Lego modulars. I've got them on a shelf. What do I do next? Because I have all this shelf space to fill up. Well, in order to grow your city, you're gonna need more modulars. And like we said before, modulars can be expensive builds. So depending on your budget and what modulars you've already gotten, I would look specifically at getting the ones that LEGO currently has on their website. Again, during like a double points event or something like that, so you're really getting your money's worth. Or if there's like a really cool promo that you want, that's a good uh, purchase to be able to hit most of the thresholds. Then after you have those, I would then start to look on places like Facebook Marketplace, uh, maybe even like Craigslist or eBay for some of the older retired modulars, but not the ones like the Green Grocer and those that are like a bajillion dollars or even like the Brick Bank that's like $600. I would focus on more of the most recent modulars that have just retired. Those would include my first modular, the bookshop, the police station, the diner. I think another really good one if you want to just get a little bit older that isn't as expensive. The Grand Emporium is older and a little expensive. I did really like that one. I also made sure to get the Palace Cinema as well pretty early and I don't think that cost too much after it was retired. Um, that might have changed since I've gotten it. But again, look on Facebook Marketplace. Um, you could even go to like brick and minifig stores around your area. They usually sell retired Lego sets. Just keep an eye out. I always just scroll through the Marketplace page when I have time and sometimes you might find some really good deals. Uh, most of the time they'll already be built. It's Lego, you can always take it apart, rebuild it yourself. All the instructions are online on Lego's website. So even if it doesn't have the box or the instructions, as long as you have the bricks in the building, like it doesn't really matter. Now, if you want to get really out there, I would recommend checking out rebrickable.com. This is an awesome website where fans get to post instructions for their own mocks or my own creation builds. And there are a ton of Lego modulars on there, especially ones that are like remixes of sets that already exist. So one of the people I really like to follow on Rebrickable is Brick Artisan. He makes a ton of really cool builds where it takes official Lego sets, sometimes that aren't even modulars, like three-in-one sets, and then he builds them into modular buildings um, or modular buildings that look different than the original building. Uh, some of my favorite are what he did with the Natural History Museum. I think he also did one for the police station. And so those are really cool builds if you want to have a different building, but you also can find one of those Lego modulars either for cheap and you already own one, but you can rebuild it into something else. Other than that, I would suggest following content creators like me or anybody really that makes their own Lego City content because it could help you gain inspiration. You could learn from their mistakes, kind of like I talked about with my Lego City table back there. And it will really just kind of give you a leg up in terms of building and planning your own Lego City. For instance, I'm a huge fan of Brixie here on YouTube. I'll go ahead and link his channel below. He has a ginormous studio for his Lego City and he has definitely inspired me to build my own Lego city and I learn different things from his videos all the time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you start your Lego city journey. I'm really excited to see what you make. Please get in the comments below and share any stories or about any modular buildings that you've recently gotten. I would love to hear and read those, but until next time, keep building.